Not here. Huh. Looks like they aren't back yet. What if they're dead? Oh man. Now we've got to go look for them. Shirono おや、クオークの。バングルの剣についてだ。さっきポットの中のあいつを見たとき、左の手首にバングルをはめられていなかった。あれは。なぜだ。How it's pretty dangerous because it's a nine. What if Ten Myoji and Clover. Well, not Clover, but. But what if somebody took it and already left? What? Oh no. We wouldn't be able to go through the secondary door. Mm. Who would be pairing up with Quark? Who's the cyan pair? Oh, and they just happen to be conveniently not here. What's going on? Does that mean Clover and Tenmyoji took the bracelet? Then why aren't they back yet? If you have a nine, you can go. Shiro no What? No, that's not possible. The primary doors haven't even opened yet. もしかしたら何者かが開いたのかも。ほら、緑の扉の先に3枚の扉があったでしょ。あのうちの1枚は何者かによってオープンの状態にされていた。あれと同じことですよ。but, but that's against the rules. え、わかっていますね。ですが、扉を開いたのがゼロボスだったとしたら、ルールも減ったくれもないのではありませんか。このゲームにおいてはゼロボスこそがゲームマスターのようなものですからね。つまり、四つ葉か天明寺のうちの
ディオを連れてくるのを忘れないようになうん<笑> Of course The elevator? Oh, what the hell is this door? Oh my god. Pantry. This is the pantry? Beyond the red door. Okay. The safe is not open. Well, looks like they're not here. Cloak and so such no, study no tanto cashua. Aka no tobira no saki. Snouchi, Kono Hiano has this guy. Not gonna do us any good to hang around here, though. Let's head upstairs. Makarimasa. Nobody's here. No one here either, huh? Tim Yoji loves scotch so much. I thought we might find him here drinking some. It was around that time that I noticed Kay was acting strangely. He was staring at the shelf of alcohol in a way that I probably would have described as blankly if I could actually have seen his eyes. I still think he took something from that safe earlier, in the golem room. Hey, what's up? You want a drink? Oh, yeah. Can he even have a drink? Right. Sorry, that sucks. Honestly, I'd gotten so used to the suit, I kind of forgotten you were wearing it. Why the heck did they make you wear that thing anyway? How do we know there's something under that suit? If something like Zero the Third can exist, K can be a robot. Especially because earlier in the... Um, in the... what's that place called? The medical bay? Where the old lady is? He was like, oh, this feels so natural for some reason. He could be an AI. <laughs> you still don't remember anything? Oh? Really? What did you remember? What? When dad? When did you... Oh, it's a pun. <laughs> when did you remember that? Did it just pop out of out of nowhere? Sorry. So, you remembered who your father was? Yeah. What about your mom? Hmm. Oh, so your dad raised you? Your dad made you? Your dad programmed you? Yeah. Ma. K stopped for a moment, then calmly folded his hands in front of him. And you were already wearing this? Even though it's a small version of it, what the hell? Oh, so you were 
私は成長するまで父以外の人間を見たことがありませんでしたしかし何しろ生まれた時からその状況ですからそれを不審に思うことさえありませんでした The facility That sounds ominous That's a zero plushie He wouldn't allow me to go near him while he was working, but the only times he wasn't working were the times when he was sleeping. So, this is Kay talking. As such, the only communication I had was with the education software he'd given me. I suppose I was a fairly expressionless child then. We developed body language to communicate with others, and with no one else to communicate with, I suppose it makes sense. Once I learned to read and write, I began to realize that my situation was not normal. Many of my books mentioned a mother as part of a family, and in several, the mother, father, and children would eat meals together and talk to one another. Soon, I found myself longing for a mother of my own. Someone who would always be with me, who would scold me if I did something wrong at night. They would read to me before bedtime. If only I had a mother like that, I thought, I would be so happy. So, for the first time in my life, I asked my father for something. He had finished working and, as usual, was making his way toward his bedroom when I stopped him and asked for a mother. He looked at me silently for a long time before finally responding, Okay. I remember to this day. How happy I was at that moment. A few months later, he called me into his laboratory. It was the first time he'd ever done anything like that. My heart was beating quickly as I stepped inside. Standing next to him was a young woman, and my hopes soared. But when he said her name was, or rather, her ID number, they were dashed. He had given me a robot to play the role of a mother. I didn't want a mother that was just a machine who did what a human told her to. When I told my father that, he looked surprised for the first time in my life. Then he frowned, coughed, and admonished me for being a whiner. He never scolded me for anything before. At first, I was surprised, then angry. Hot tears streamed down my face. My father ordered the robot to take care of me and shoot us out of his lab. The robot was very convincing, and she smiled and spoke as if she was a real person, but I refused to answer her and locked myself in my room. You can talk to a robot and it'll respond, but in the end, you're still talking to a machine, not a person. If that was what I'd wanted, I still had the education software my father had given me. When I ignored the robot as it tried to take care of me, it looked sad. It couldn't really be sad, of course. It was only programmed to look that way. A robot's facade of sadness didn't mean anything to me. After that, I stopped expecting anything from my father. We'd never really spoken to begin with, so it was easy enough for me to just make sure we never saw one another. I lived my life. As if he didn't exist. Perhaps it seems strange to you that I continue to live with him. But I never considered leaving. Perhaps in the hidden depths of my heart, I longed for a relationship with my father. Everything changed when I was 18. I left my room one morning to find a woman standing outside of it. She was the first human I'd ever seen, apart from my father, and I was understandably surprised. For a moment, I thought my father had created a new robot, but when I told her that, she laughed and explained that she had come to help him. As it turned out, she was a very mysterious person. She was much older than I was, but something about the way she behaved was almost girlish. She would tell me stories about the world outside in such a way. That I was never sure if she was telling me the truth or making up fantastic lies. 
Ultimately, though, the truth didn't matter. I loved her stories. She wasn't helping my father directly with his research, so I spent most of my days with her. Before long, I discovered she knew my father when he was young. She told me stories of how he'd fallen in love as a younger man, and I began to imagine that the person he'd fallen in love with had been her, and that she was, in fact, secretly my mother. After she settled in with us, our long-established routine began to change drastically. The facility. Doesn't it look like this warehouse? The door. Look. The chairs. It's the same as the lounge. Beginning to find it pretty possible that Kay grew up in here. First, we started to eat together. Before then, I had never shared a meal with anyone in 18 years. She scolded me for my table manners, or more accurately, the lack thereof. If I was going to eat with others, she said, I would need to be more polite. Having eaten alone for my entire life, manners had never been something I'd even thought about. My father got into trouble too, when he made the mistake of reading through research papers during dinner. The look of surprise and embarrassment on his face made me burst into laughter. I couldn't remember the last time I'd share a laugh with my father. It might have been the first time. The room we considered our living room changed too. Before, it had just been another room, but she made it comfortable. After we finished our dinner, I would sit on the sofa and relax with her and my father. Those times were the ones I cherished the most. For a little while, every day, I got the family I'd longed for ever since I was a child. At her suggestion, I started to help with my father's research. He specialized in genetic engineering, and I discovered that I had an interest in it as well. Time faded away as I lost myself in research. Now that we were working and studying together, my father and I had a great deal to talk about. For the first time in my life, we began to speak with one another like a father and son. Whenever I impressed him with something I'd learned, I felt a surge of happiness, and it drove me to study even harder. My days felt full, right, and meaningful, but most importantly, I was happy. Um... Doesn't this look like the old lady? I'm not sure about this one. What? Four years passed in the blink of an eye, until one day, I happened to overhear my father and the woman speaking in the laboratory. Their tone was serious, so I listened closer, curious to know what they were talking about. That was when I heard her say that she had planned to give her life to achieve their goals. It was clear that she wasn't being metaphorical. She would have to die. I was in shock. The research I had thrown myself into would lead to her death? I asked my father to stop his research immediately. He refused to listen. She agreed with him. She told me that she had been prepared for what she had to do since the day she came into our facility. My father had known about it from the beginning as well. Angry and disappointed, I began to investigate what exactly the research I'd been helping with was working toward. Perhaps, I thought, perhaps I could figure out a way to keep her alive. I discovered much more than I'd bargained for. To begin with, I learned that the ultimate success of my father's research would require a good deal of sacrifice. And I also learned that my own existence was just another part of his project. See, a robot. I had been created to function as my father's spare. If he died during his research, I was intended to continue it in his place. I was stunned. 
I was furious with my father, and with her, and even with the research I'd poured myself into for four years. There was only one thing to do, destroy the facility and end my father's horrible research once and for all. I made plans to destroy the main reactor with it, and with it, the entire facility. But she saw right through me. My father was livid and locked me in my room until his research was complete. All I could think of was how I might stop him. She did her best to convince me that I'd misunderstood, that everything would be fine. As much as I wanted to believe her, I remembered in the back of my mind that she had been the one who pushed me to be involved in my father's research. Had that been an earnest desire to give me something to do with my life? Or... Still, I couldn't bring myself to hate her. She had given me a reason to live. Even if she conspired with my father to mold me into his replacement, the warmth she'd shown me had been real. She made me feel as if I had a real family, and that was something I wouldn't have given up for the world. I pleaded with her to leave, but quietly, she shook her head. There was someone very special to her, she told me. He saved her life once, and she felt her death would help to repay that favor. She would have liked nothing more than to marry him and live a happy, normal life together, but she couldn't. For his sake, she said, and for the sake of the future she had wanted, she was determined to see my father's research succeed. I realized then that although she was the most important person in my life, that there was someone more important than me in hers. She tried to explain that beyond what we could see was a future where no one would have to die but I refused to listen. What good was a potential future to me? It was what I had now that I wanted. I couldn't stand to think that she would give her life for a man I'd never even seen. So I shut myself off from the world. Perhaps that is why I lost my memory. Kay let out a deep, tired sigh. So the way it was mentioned how his dad made him to be his replacement, I feel like that's a pretty clear indication that he's a robot, but at the same time, I feel like nobody... Like, they're not treating it as a big reveal, so I'm not sure what's going on here. It's okay. So, you remember almost everything? The fact that we couldn't see the lady's face makes me think that it's someone important. Huh. もう仕訳ありませんが、シグマさん。少し横になってもいいですか。What's Okay. Take as long as you need. I'll go look for Clover and Temyoji myself. Mmm, so robots don't need rest though, right? So now I'm kind of confused. It felt pretty clear to me that he's a robot because of the wording. He made me. My father made me. Not my father gave birth to me or anything. I guess that was a metaphor then. Like, my father molded me into becoming something. Kay lowered himself heavily onto the red sofa in the corner of the room. Well, guess I'd better get moving then. We are all split up. 
Not happy about this. I stepped out of the room and nearly ran into Fi. Fi? What are you doing? You're supposed to be waiting back in the warehouse. わかってる。ちょっと様子を見に来ただけだよ。待てと暮らせど、誰もやってくる気配がなかったから。その感じだと、まだ見つかってないみたいだな。四つ葉と天明寺。いや、K は。He's in the lounge. 別れることにしたのか。well, not quite. Instead of waiting for my answer, she opened the door to the lounge and walked in. Oi, what's I guess he's not feeling too well. He said he wanted to rest for a bit. I think so. We should leave him alone right now, though. Remember, there's a real person inside that suit. Mm. I'm sure he's just tired. What? Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Really? Well, I guess I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little exhausted. I mean, all of a sudden I wake up trapped in some weird ass game, and then dead bodies start turning up. Honestly, I'm amazed that I managed to hold on to my sanity for this long. Just about everything here makes absolutely no sense. The more I try to figure out any of it, the more I feel like my brain's just going to melt and run out my ears. You know what I'm talking about, right? We managed to figure out who the killer was, but there's still a hundred other questions we have no idea about. You got that right. Where the hell are we? Why are we even here? What's this whole nonary game thing for? And what is Zero Senior up to? Hell, how about who Zero Senior is? The rabbit said he was one of us, but... Do you think it's Theo? <laughs> Besides, we still don't know why Dio killed them. He said he was ordered to do it, but... And there's more, too. What about the old lady? Who is she? What's her deal? Hell, what are any of our deals? I don't know jack shit about anybody here. I don't even know anything about you, Fi. Oi, Yoseo. Watashi no koto utagatte iru no ka? No, that's not it. Watashi wa omae to onaji yo ni, wake mo wakara no mama ni, kono shitetsu ni sarawarete kita dake da. Well, so is everybody else, right? I don't really have a reason to trust you over anyone else, although I kind of do because I woke up with you. Oh! Same day. She trailed off. Is that a gunshot? You heard that, right? Ah. Let's go have a look. Maybe they got on the elevator? Elevator Yeah, buddy, though. 
Let's go. Which way? Where do you think they went? Why? うん。グラディア。ああ、そう。気になるだろう。二人が無事かどうか確認しておきたいんだ。にゃあ。They're Huh? That means there's still another killer among us. Are you serious? You're gonna believe him? It's a good place to start because you don't know where the noise came from, you don't know where to go. So why not go to the place where you know people are there? And it honestly makes no sense that they left K in that room, because this kind of it's potentially dangerous. Why would you not wake him up? Even if he's tired, he's gotta move. Alright, fine. We headed to the first pod. I cracked open the top and lifted it back. Oh my lord. Oh. There was Quark, sound asleep. See? Ah, that's I was totally expecting him to be gone. Dion,方はどうだ? Let's open his. Just me and Fi can't control him though. We don't have K here. Whoa. What the hell? Sigma! Miyako! It was pointless to check his pulse. He was obviously dead. But I did it anyway. Yeah. He's dead. Miro. Somebody killed. Yeah. Then that means he asphyxiated. But why? Yet they left Quark alone. Who? Quark could have done it too and pretended to be asleep again. He's dead. Without waiting for me to follow, Phi turned and ran off. I took a deep breath and followed. Please don't show me the map again. Phi and I burst into the lounge and ran up to K. Kay! Kay! Wake up! Something's happened! When he didn't move, I grabbed him by the shoulders and shook. He twitched and quickly sat up. We explained about how we found Dio dead, 
and how it looked like he died of asphyxiation. It appeared that somebody had reduced the oxygen level of his paw to zero. It might be important to note that whoever killed Dio did not take his bracelet. So it could have been just for revenge, for all we know. The only people who could have done it are Clover and Tenmyoji. What? No! That's impossible! Not at all! Are you suggesting Quark woke up, opened his pod from the inside, killed Dio, and then went back to sleep? Yeah, he can't do that! Yeah. If we t yeah, she he's right, he's right. That sound, we don't know what it's related to. It might not have been Dio. And it probably wasn't, because why would it make that huge noise? So she could have killed him and then come to me. So this. わたし She went on to explain about the sound we'd heard. なるほど。物音ですか。だとしたら、やはり四つ葉さんとテンミオジさんが犯人という可能性が濃厚でしょうか。A sound. What was it though? Kei and Sigma were two of them searching for each other. They were always together. Yes, that's right. They didn't have any trouble at all. No. No. いずれにせよ。今はじっくりと考えている時間はなさそうです。Crap! We've only got seven minutes until the primary doors open. やむを得。B階の倉庫に向かおう。もしかしたら四つ葉と天明寺はすでにあそこに行っているかもしれないし。I still can't believe we're just leaving Quark in that pod there. ところでディオさんのバングルバ。his what? Bangle? Yahari, Kaishu stand nine this night. Dio San no Bangleva, Midori no Soroban. Ipo, Watasto Faisama, Murasaki no Peaban Descara. Soka, who carries theta? Dio no Bangle Ganito, Watasto Keva, Shiro no Daini Tobido, Hiraka Nangana. So you got on the bus. Then we need to hurry. We'll drop by the treatment center on the way back and grab the bracelet. いや、何も3人で行くことはないでしょう。バングルは私が拾ってきますから。お二人は先に下の倉庫に向かってください。ああ、I'm oh, so wary of every single time we split up. わかった。Oh, so, so. Were these Alice and Luna's? え、この2つのバングルがないと青のソロバンであるシグマさんは先に進めなくなってしまいます。ですから、さあ、どうぞ。受け取ってください。I grab the bracelets and shove them into my pocket. よし。それじゃあ行こう。We never solved that anagram. Nobody talked about it. Shit! They're not here. Suruto K ga itta yo ni. Yahari futari de shiro no tobira no saki. With Quark's bracelet? Arui wa. Or what? 
Oh, come on, man. You better not give me that. Maybe they're already dead, crap. I got enough of it from Dio. But they might be. You've got to be kidding me. This isn't funny, Fi. If you're right, then you, Kay, Quark, and I are the only people still alive in here. We heard a noise and turned. Okay. それがもちろん回収はしてきたのですがまあ見ていただくのが一番早いでしょうこれがポットの中に転がっていたディオさんのバングルですオッケー<笑> okay. That's Why would somebody do that? They killed Dio by taking away the oxygen, opened the pod, deliberately broke the bracelet and put it back in there, as opposed to just taking it with them. They don't want us to advance, on purpose. What the hell? But why? There's no point! They don't want us to go in. カラードドアが解放されました。カラードドア閉鎖までのこり5分です。バングルがこの状態では、CDの認証をクリアすることはできないでしょう。すると私と K はこのシロの扉の先へは進めないということになるな。Oh no. Shit. You're... You're gonna... I actually don't remember this rule, but I'm assuming it's death. なるほど。犯人の狙いはそれか。そいつはこのゲームのルールを利用して間接的に私と K を殺そうと。そのためにディオのバングルを破壊したんだな。Well, earlier we were speculating that Tenmyoji and Clover had already gone inside the white door, but then Dio died. So if it was done by Tenmyoji and Clover, that means they haven't gone through yet. Or chances are it's just somebody else. Yeah. How can you be so calm? In five minutes, you're gonna be... be... Sigma, you're going to go ahead and take care of yourself. If you've got a bangle from Kay, you can open the next door to the next door. So... Fuck that! You know I can't just ditch you guys like that! You think I don't know that? But what kind of a monster am I if I just leave you here to die? You would be K. I am certain if K was in your position, he would go. God damn it! This was bad. What was I gonna do? I needed to calm down. Just calm down. Calm down and think. There had to be a way to save them. There had... What?! Are you serious? What? Oh my god. Oh, this must be one of those endings where we don't have enough information yet. God 
damn it! Well... What should I do next then? Should I just go clearing out this branch? That seems logical to me. So unlike 999, I'm actually playing a little bit ahead right now, and by the time you watch this, probably I've already started on the next route. Mmm, yeah, I think I'll just keep clearing this one, this one branch then, just to clear it off, because that seems the simplest. Except for this part. This part seems... a little bit different here. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to clearing this part then, and um... Oh! Right, I forgot about this for a long time, but um, the gold files. Mmm, what's the best way for me to show it here? Maybe I'll go back here? Into the CDs? Okay, so, if I can see the secrets. I've been told that some of these are okay to look at, some of them are not. I obviously don't know which ones are until I read it. But if we save them all till the very end, then it's like there's no point in reading it anyway because the game's done. So what I thought was that we could read these in batches maybe after a few playthroughs or routes. Yeah, let me know which ones are safe. And, and I'll try to see if I can read them. Or, if you think this is not the best way to do it, feel free to let me know what the best way is. So far, I have 16. See, some of them. This just seems like explanation of how the things work. AI bracelets, quantum computer. What is a nonary game? Yeah. Oh, I don't have 16 of them. There's 16 pages. I got the first two pages. Cool, and this is the passwords. For some reason, we didn't get whatever this is. Anyway, yeah, so that's it for this route then. We allied with Luna to begin with, and then we betrayed and allied with Kay. At the end of betraying Kay, we got stuck. So I guess we'll be going back there eventually. And when we come back, we will look into... Where are we right now? So we still, we're still allying with Luna here. But now, uh, we chose a different door to go through. Right, Kate blocked us from one door, but there's still another door here, so when we come back, we will be looking at that then. See you soon!